A very good evening and welcome to the 7 o'clock news, live from Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa met to secret palace today with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King reviewed with their Royal Highnesses the excellent results of his visit to Egypt and his fruitful talks with the Egyptian President, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, which will positively impact the deep-rooted bilateral relations and joint cooperation. His Majesty also noted the importance of the resolutions of the 28th Ordinary Arab Summit, which he attended alongside Arab leaders in Jordan, confirming that it has great significance in enhancing Arab joint action and serving the interests of the Arab nations. He commended the efforts of His Majesty King Abdullah II Ibn al Hussein of Jordan, which contributed to the success of the summit. The meeting also reviewed local issues that aim to reinforce the national process and support the economy so as to achieve comprehensive development. His Majesty the King affirmed that development programs are ongoing to serve the country and the people. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their efforts to develop the work of the government through adopting initiatives that support economic growth to achieve the best interest of Bahrain and its people. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sikhir Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the Malaysian Defence Minister, Hishamuddin Hussain, on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom. The Defence Minister conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of Malaysia's King, His Majesty Sultan Mohammed V, and Malaysia's Prime Minister, Mohammed Najib Abdul Razak, as well as their wishes of further progress and prosperity to the people of Bahrain. His Majesty the King expressed pride in the continuous development of the deep-rooted brother relations between Bahrain and Malaysia, supported by the two countries' leaderships. His Majesty welcomed the visit of the Malaysian Defence Minister and asked him to convey his greetings and wishes of further progress and prosperity to the King, Prime Minister and people of Malaysia. He affirmed the Kingdom's interest in strengthening cooperation with Malaysia, particularly in the military and defence fields. He also hailed the efforts of Malaysia to maintain peace and security in the region. His Majesty noted that this visit contributes to the consolidation of bilateral cooperation and increases joint coordination. He discussed with the Malaysian Defence Minister the latest regional and international developments, as well as issues of common concern. For his part, the Malaysian minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to strengthen bilateral relations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 5 of 2017, restructuring the National Industries Protection and Support Committee. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism's Ministries Undersecretary for Industrial Affairs has been appointed as Chairman, and the Assistant Undersecretary for Industrial Development has been appointed as the Deputy Chairman of the National Industries Protection and Support Committee. Also appointed as members of the committee are the Director of Customs Clearance and Follow-up from the Customs Affairs Division of the Ministry of Interior, the Director of Regulation at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, and the Head of GCC Relations in the Ministry of Finance. The membership terms have a three-year renewable duration. His Royal Highness Prime Minister received a number of royal family members and senior officials, telling them that laws and legislation are designed to benefit citizens, the nation and the economy. He asserted his interest in hearing the views of those affected by any legislation, as the ultimate goal for any government is the public's best interest. He added that partnership is a government platform that shall never be deviated from. His Royal Highness urged the adoption of all that elevates the status of the people and boosts unity, and the rejection of all that undermines Bahrain's achievements. He emphasised that prosperity and security work hand in hand, and require contributions from all components of society. His Royal Highness asserted that Bahraini citizens are proven patriots, 
who are keen to cooperate with the government towards comprehensive sustainable development. In particular, he highlighted the government's interest in growing the tourism sector and providing more leisure facilities for citizens and tourists alike. His Royal Highness Prime Minister reviewed with the attendees the latest regional and international developments, stressing that a redoubling of efforts to ensure stability and security would provide a fertile ground for economic development and consolidation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, first Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, chaired the EDB's board meeting today, where he stressed the importance of strengthening the Kingdom's competitiveness, regionally and globally, by further enhancing the environment for doing business. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of attracting foreign direct investment, FDI, which directly contributes to the national economy and helps to create high-quality job opportunities for Bahrainis. He praised the Kingdom's open and modern economic regulations, which boost the Kingdom's reputation as an investment destination. He also noted Bahrain's success in supporting key economic sectors and maintaining international competitiveness. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's numerous achievements, including the development of the financial sector with the innovative and competitive services it provides, which are responsive to global economic trends. He urged, continuation in, he urged continuing progress in all sectors. The EDB's strategic role in attracting FDI and promoting the Kingdom of Bahrain globally was strongly acknowledged. EDB Chief Executive Khalid al Ramehi then presented the latest key economic developments, as well as progress reports on EDB initiatives undertaken in collaboration with other ministries and authorities. Developments discussed included the development of new laws and legislation, improvements to the commercial dispute resolution process, and initiatives facilitating commercial registration. Each initiative is designed to streamline business entry into Bahrain, improve the commercial judicial system and support the SME sector. Aramehi also touched on the EDB strategy for securing investment into target sectors by briefing prospective investors on opportunities in the Kingdom at major international events. Additionally, the expansion of the EDB's international presence was discussed. The EDB has recently launched new operating offices in Turkey, the USA, Malaysia, Singapore, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Holland and Denmark, in addition to existing offices in Japan, India, China and the UK, amongst others. Aramehi added that the EDB, during the first quarter of this year, has successfully attracted a number of companies to establish their operations in the Kingdom, creating jobs in the sectors of logistics, ICT and social services. He then highlighted the growing importance of fintech or financial technology and its vast contribution to further improving the Kingdom's finance sector as a whole. He also highlighted that the EDB continues to communicate with global and local financial institutions with the goal of encouraging them to adopt projects and initiatives related to fintech to contribute to the development of the sector in Bahrain. In this regard, Al Ramehi emphasised the role of the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, in creating an atmosphere required to support an innovative and inclusive financial sector. The EDB has also recently announced a strategic partnership with the Singapore Fintech Consortium and Trucial Investment Partners. Aramehi added that Bahrain is one of the first countries regionally to join an international global fintech hubs federation, which aims to further strengthen knowledge and expertise within the financial technology sector. The representative for His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, as well as Honorary Chairman of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, BREEF, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed his deep appreciation for the achievements made by riders Mohamed Abdel Samad and Ali Bousfar, who came in first place in the French Fontainebleau horse race. His Highness noted that this achievement is encouraging, as the race is the first of the royal team's overseas participations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the team continues to reap achievements in the European races due to the riders' high spirits, in addition to their keenness to achieve the best results to elevate the kingdom's sporting status in general and endurance racing in particular. He also stated that this experience would prepare the team for upcoming championships, wishing the royal team abundant achievements. National team fighter and member of Khalid bin Hamid Mixed Martial Arts Amateur Team, member Hussein Ayad won a bronze medal in the European Open Championships of the Amateur Mixed Martial Arts, which took place in the capital of Bulgaria, Sofia. 
the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation and founder of Khaled bin Hamid Mixed Martial Arts Organization, KHK MMA, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamid Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa on this occasion, affirming that this achievement reflects the support of His Majesty the King for Bahraini sports. His Highness also congratulated His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Hamad bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on this achievement, which reflects the government's efforts to develop the sports sector in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Khalid congratulated the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on this national achievement, which reflects the efforts of Sheikh Nasser to support this sport and Bahraini youth and contributes to enhancing the position of Bahraini MMA on the global sporting map. Sheikh Khalid expressed pleasure with Ayad's achievement and noted the aspiration of further developing Bahraini mixed martial arts. His Highness stated that the aim of participating in such championships is to reinforce the status of Bahrain in international competitions and to promote the level of the kingdom in mixed martial arts. He praised the efforts of the administrative and technical bodies in preparing the fighters. Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received today at the General Command Building Malaysian Defence Minister Hishamuddin Hussain and his accompanying delegation. Upon the minister's arrival, the national anthem of Malaysia was played and the guards of honour were then expected. A formal session of talks was held between the Bahraini side, led by BDF Commander-in-Chief, and the Malaysian side, led by the Malaysian Defence Minister. Present were the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed al BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sakhar al Noemi, Defence Ministry Undersecretary, Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed al Khalifa, a number of senior officers of the BDF, and members of the delegation accompanying the Malaysian Defence Minister. Minister Hussain was briefed about the BDF, its different military units, and its continuous development under the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa. The BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Defence Minister, affirming that this visit comes within the framework of developing and strengthening military cooperation between the two friendly countries. He hailed the existing bilateral relations, adding that exchanging visits contributes to developing friendship. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed highlighted the leadership's keenness to support and develop the existing relations for the benefits of both countries and their peoples. After that, the two parties exchanged commemorative gifts. Royal Guard Commander His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at his office the Malaysian Defence Minister Hishamuddin Hussain in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander His Highness Major General Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed the Defence Minister, praising the deep-rooted bilateral relations between the two countries. He discussed with the Minister a number of issues of common concern. Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronized today the inauguration of the Electronic Education Conference at the Sofitel Hotel, organized by Bahrain Polytechnic in the presence of a number of international experts. Ministers and senior officials also attended. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak expressed pressure in patronizing the conference that aims to discuss the rapid technological development and present the outcomes reached by the researchers. He said that Bahrain Polytechnic is an initiative in the Education and Training Development Project and it was always keen to graduate qualified students that the labour market needs, that are able to compete in business, production and innovation. He added that the conference is an addition to Bahrain Polytechnic in its continuous development process, which creates new opportunities and exchanges new ideas and expertise through such meetings and discussions in order to enhance the status of the Kingdom in the field of education. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak stressed the importance of coping with continuous technological development and applying the new methods in schools in Bahrain to ensure flexible education for students. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the participants and the organizing committee of the conference, wishing them all success. The Education Minister, Dr. Majid al Noemi, delivered a speech in which he thanked the Deputy Prime Minister for patronizing the conference and for his continuous support to all efforts aiming to develop the education sector, affirming the importance of electronic education to education and the economy. The CEO of Bahrain Polytechnic, the chairman of the conference, the CEO of the UK Academy for Higher Education, the director of education at Microsoft in the Gulf also delivered speeches, 
expressing the importance of electronic education and the application of facilities in the education process. The Deputy Prime Minister then honoured the speakers and the sponsors of the conference, followed by a tour of the Electronic Education Exhibition. Information Affairs Minister and Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD Chairman Ali Aramehi, today patronised the signing of an MOU between BIPD and Watani Al Emirat Foundation in the presence of the acting CEO of the BIPD, Anwar Ahmed, and the Director General of Watani Al Emirat Foundation, Tehrar Aflesi. Aramehi affirmed that the patriotism is essential to the development of countries and the protection of their unity and achievements. He expressed pleasure at signing the MOU affirming the importance of partnership amongst Gulf national institutions in maintaining the Arab and Islamic identity and strengthening Gulf patriotism through the exchange of expertise, scientific research and raising legal and political awareness. The Information Affairs Minister expressed the importance of raising awareness about citizens' duties and rights within the framework of respect for the constitution, law and public order, maintaining the pillars of the national modern civil state through abidance by the democratic guidelines of peaceful expression of opinion and the promotion of tolerance and peaceful coexistence amongst all components of society, and rejecting extremism, hatred and division. He added that the foreign threats and international challenges that face the Arab and Islamic nations have proven that the strength of a country lies in its citizens' good citizenship as a dividing line between a civil state and a state devastated by civil war and sectarian division. Aramehi affirmed that the Gulf Cooperation Council have managed to achieve sustainable development thanks to the member states' wise leaderships and the awareness of their people. 
For his part, Al-Falaisi expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Information Affairs for enhancing cooperation and understanding between the two sides through establishing joint activities and events and exchanging scientific research experiences, which all contribute to strengthening the cultural identity of the GCC countries and highlighting their achievements in various regional and international forums. The International Peace Institute's MENA office, based in Bahrain, hosted an Art for Peace exhibition, showcasing artists from across the region. More with Yasmin Ibrahim in this report. I would like the International Peace Institute for the Middle East and North Africa hosted an Art for Peace exhibition in collaboration with Ms. Wudad al Bakr, along with the participation of painters from the region who aim to promote peace through their artwork. I took the initiative of uh, establishing this uh, beautiful, peaceful event. I, uh, I called my uh, colleagues, the artists, and I asked them to have this donation uh, uh, to the International Peace Institute and uh, I was really honored that they accepted. Uh, I believe that art uh, brings people together and uh, despite this, uh, I mean, uh, their differences or their backgrounds, uh, art has no language, uh, no religion. Uh, uh, it, it comes from the heart and goes back to the heart. I'm so happy that a group of women and led by a Saudi painter Widad al Bakr generated this momentum by mobilizing a number of uh, painters and majority of them are women from Bahrain to come and offer and donate their paintings as a token of recognition to the efforts of International Peace Institute Middle East and North Africa to work on making peace prevail in the region. The exhibition showcased art pieces by prominent painters of both women and men whose work was inspired by the pressing need to encourage activating peace within the region. Through painting, it is, will be uh, a good message uh, for a peace. And here, as example of uh, my work, and we hang it in the uh, Institute of uh, Peace uh, in Bahrain. And I'm sure uh, the painting will be uh, for global and for any visitors of the place he will get uh, calm, peace, uh, happy. The event aims at fostering the culture of peace through inspiration and creativity, where the artworks will remain at the custody of the IPI Amina as tokens of the artist's attachment to peace in the region and beyond. The Art for Peace exhibition showcased more than just peace in the artworks showcased here today. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yassine Ibrahim. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,346.08 points, marking a decrease of 9.91 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks, investment, hotels and tourism sectors, and investors traded mainly in the insurance sector with 64.48% of total shares. 98 transactions included 17,555,181 shares worth 2,095,290 Bahraini dinars.